So imagine that we are in the process of solving a differential equation. In fact, this one, dy dt is equal to minus y plus 2 sine t. That's the differential equation we want to solve. And uh, there's an initial condition at time 0, y is equal to 10. So over here I have some code. I'm loading the packages I need. I'm defining my differential equation here. Let's write that. Right there. And I'm returning the, um, the derivative here. And uh, I'm defining a time interval in which um, which consists of 100 points from 0 to 10, um, which are the points in which I want uh, the computer to store the solutions. So I'm going to get 100 points out. And the solution method is solve IVP, which I loaded from the SciPy integrate package here. I'm feeding solve IVP the differential equation here, the start and end time point, the initial condition, which is 10, that's this one over here, and then I'm telling it to evaluate the solution at those time points over here, the time interval here, the 100 time points. So let's see what happens. There we are. I've made a plot here of the time points versus the solution points. And it, look, it looks like this. This is all very well, but this is not the, uh, the, the point of this video. The idea is now that I want to use this solution to solve an equation. Um, specifically, I want to solve the equation y of t is equal to 1. Now the problem is I don't have I don't have an analytical a symbolic expression for y here because I solved it numerically so all I have is these 100 points here that make up this graph so that leaves me two options either I can solve it graphically by simply plotting a line here at 1 horizontally all the way out here and see where it intersects the graph that would correspond to the solutions to this equation here. So we can try that first. So I'm just going to make a new cell here and then I'm going to define a new plot. And in this plot I want to plot t versus a lot of uh, ones or in fact a hundred ones. So I'm going to make, make a list of ones. I can do that or an array to be specific. I can do that using the uh, np.ones command. And I know there's going to be a hundred of them here. I'm going to, well, in fact, I can just copy the, the plot command from up here. So I'm going to plot these two graphs together and show them in the same plot. Let's see what happens. Okay, so it's changed color, but nevertheless, I can sort of read off the solutions here where the graph intersects one. Now, if I want to make a more precise solution, because you're not always able to do it graphically if you have high dimension solutions or whatnot, and maybe you want to include the solution in your code uh, without having to plot and read off, um, then we have to use the keyword events in the solve IVP command. So how does that work? Well, events, this events keyboard word in the solve IVP command uh, requires me to define a function. Let's call it my event, which takes T and Y as arguments. And this function should return an expression or a value which is uh, which has the property that it becomes zero 
when the event in which I'm interested is true. So in this case here, what I would return is the y value minus one, because I'm interested in knowing when is y equal to one. Well, if I return y minus one, then that certainly will be zero um, when y is equal to one. So this expression here represents a value which is zero when the event of interest occurs. And that might be more, more than once. In fact, we can see that it is more than once here in this interval here. So let's try to write such a function. I'm calling it my event. I don't obviously I don't have to do that. I can call it whatever I want. My y minus one. And I should include an index here because um, solve IVP all, always assumes that we're solving um, a system of differential equations. In our case here, there's only one differential equation. There's only one function, y. Um, but a solve IVP always assumes that it could be a system of equations. That's why I have to put the initial value in brackets here, because there could be more than one initial value. And that's why I need to put an index on here, because there's only one solution, but still uh, solve IVP expects an array of solutions. And all I have to do now is to copy my, my well, I, in fact, I'll copy my two lines here because I want to plot it as well. In fact, I'm not going to plot it. I'm just going to solve it. But I do need to include the events, oops, events equals my event. Let's make it a little wider here. So this events here is given a reference to my function up here that returns a zero when the event occurs. If I want to see the output of the events, uh, I write solution dot t events. Oops, like that. Let's see what happens. And there we go. I get the three solutions inside the interval zero to ten, and as you can see, they match up quite nicely with what we can see in the graph here.